Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Mountains Peak. Yes, hi folks and welcome back to the channel. I'm Stevie, Mountains Peak, and uh, today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to do a tent review today. Um, we're going to be reviewing the Quixia Quick Hiker Ultra Light 3. It's a bit of a mouthful, that one. Uh, it's a three-man tunnel tent from Decathlon. Okay, folks, let's dive right in. Um, this is the Decathlon Quixia Quick Hiker Ultra Light 3. So, as the name might suggest, it's a three-person tent. It's a, a tunnel tent design, um, and it's it's very it's very light for its size. But uh, I I purchased this tent purely on the, the basis that I'll be using it as a two-person tent. I, um, I like a little bit of room when I'm camping um, to put gear and, and and different things inside the tent, keep things under the shelter. But you could fit three adults in this tent. It would be a squeeze. Um, I would say it would be a squeeze. But two and a half, absolutely. Two and a, a young kid or two and a dog, not a problem. Um, it's 2.1 metres long by 1.8 metres wide in the, the sleeping section of the tent. Um, so there's plenty of room, that's for sure. Uh, it's only a metre high, um, but it is a tunnel tent, so you do obviously lose some of your height as opposed to like a, a dome tent um, where you would have quite a lot of height to sit up in. You might struggle a little bit in this. Certainly somebody my size, I'm six foot two. Um, 1.85 metres I think I am, um, it, it does get a bit tight in the, the old headroom if you're sitting up, but uh, size wise yeah, it's quite respectable. Okay, tent weight, this is a big one, certainly a big one for me. Um, I have hiked many, many miles, um, I have camped up on top of mountains, I've hiked the West Highland Way and the Cumbria Way and all these different routes, um, and I know from experience that weight is so so important so the lighter you can get stuff the better um, as tents go this is a very light three person tent um, very light it's coming in at just over uh, 2.6 2.7 kilos um, so i think the cathlon state that it's 2. Point, i think it's 2.3 kilos they have a slightly newer version of this tent which might be a little bit lighter um, but it's very much the same design. This tent is weighing in packed at 2.7 kilos. That's stuff sacks, story, stuff sacks, and um, tent pegs all in. That's what it weighs. So that is a very, very light tent for its size. Um, I think you'll struggle to get some two man tents under three kilos nowadays, you know? Uh, but yeah, really, really light tent for its size. I actually changed out the tent pegs. On, on this one, now it comes with standard, I'll show you the tent peg it comes with as standard. The V groove tent peg, I'll show you a wee close up of that. So this is just standard kind of all round tent peg, so it does a little bit of hard ground, a little bit of soft ground because of the shape of the grooves. And um, yeah, it's a good kind of standard peg with some contours in it that will maybe take the guy lines. However, um, I have came across some terrain where the, the, it's been a lot harder um, ground than what these would maybe cope with. And I've also got a hike coming up where I'll be camping on sand, so there's different things to take into account. I upgraded these originally to a hard ground tent peg, which is one of these. Just an anodized aluminium tent peg. Now this comes in about 11 grams per peg. I usually take about 8 with me um, for this particular tent. Um, and yeah, that's that's just over 100 grams. You're not, you're not really taking that much extra weight. But... Uh, recently I've kind of run, run out of these between getting them bent and broken over the years. I've had this quite some time, this tent. So I have recently just upgraded to this peg. Not used it yet. Um, so that's for the next trip. So you might recognise the design. This is like a trilobe design. Um, so it's basically a carbon copy of the MSR Groundhog peg. Um, I got this from Amazon. I'll, I'll put a wee link down below. Um, so I've yet to try this out, but I've heard really good things about the design. Um, it'll take fair bit of hard ground and um, and soft ground um, due to the design and I think you can actually use it in snow if you peg it out horizontally and bury it in the snow. So definitely I'm going to give that a wee go. Uh, they're about 12 grams each as well. Um, so all the, the three pegs there, um, yeah, they're very much, the, much of a muchness in weight. So I haven't really 
increase or decrease the weight by getting these pegs, just the design and how useful they are on the, on the campsite, on the pitch. So I'll let you know how we got on with the, the new pegs anyway. I have just bought this thing. Now it looks like a shoehorn, but it's not, it's a tent peg. Um, so I have, how many of these have I got? Six of these. I won't need six, but these are sand and snow pegs. Um, as I said, I'm going to be doing a, a beach wild camp um, and well, it'll actually be just behind the beach on some sand dunes and it's a white sand beach, so it's very soft sand, very movable sand. Um, I have no idea how it will be. I've got various different pegs to try. I'll give it a go. I'll see how we got on. Um, but the wind is to be up around 20 miles an hour, maybe slightly more. Um, so it's something to think about um, when you're packing your gear away and thinking about the future weather conditions is, can your pegs hold it? So I'll let you know how I got on with them, but a little bit heavy, they're 50 grams each, and six of them, so if you want to try and do your maths, see how far you get. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's for that one. Um, okay, speaking about wind, uh, yeah, this, this tent has been tested quite rigorously by Decathlon. I think they do a lot of their testing in Chamonix. Um, and it's been tested to gusts of 70 kilometers an hour. I think it's around 40 odd miles an hour. Um, that's that's quite a high wind, I'll be fair. Um, not many people knowingly go out in that kind of wind camping. Um, there's only a few <laughs> extreme enthusiasts that would maybe do something like that. Um, but yeah, that's been tested on a turntable as well, so it can pretty much take that gust from any direction. Now, if you're anything like me, you kind of think a little bit about where you're pitching your tent, you're trying to get the best out of it. So I try and pitch this lower side of this tent into the wind um, to try and give me the most comfortable night's sleep possible. I don't want the tent rattling about with a big flank sided uh, part of the tent taking all the wind. However, if the wind were to change middle of the night, it would be able to cope with it as long as you don't exceed the kind of um, maximum limit of that 70 mile an hour. I've done it again, 70 kilometer an hour gusts. <laughs> I'm jumping between Imperial and Metric all the time. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very sturdy tent to say the least, um, so that's, yeah, that's been well tested. I haven't had it up at that kind of wind speed before, I think I've had a bit of most, about 20 mile an hour gusts, maybe about 15 mile an hour uh, standard wind speed there, but um, to be honest I don't think I would be going out much more than that. I say that, the next camp I've got is on a coastline as I said, on, on a beach and the gusts can get pretty strenuous, so we'll see how we got on with that. I'll let you know, I'll let you know. Right, tent cost. So, I'm not going to lie, it's not the cheapest tent in the world. It's £270 from Decathlon. Um, well, as I said, they've got a slightly newer version of the tent, um, which is a little bit lighter than, than this tent. But um, it's still a pricey tent, whatever way you want to cut it. There are cheaper tents out there, but is there cheaper tents out there that do the same things as well as this does? I don't know. Um, unfortunately, tent manufacturers don't just send me tents to test, so I've got to kind of buy this stuff myself and give you a, an honest um, review. But if you're looking for a similar style tent to this with the similar quality, durability, and, um, and space, I think you're looking at a much more expensive tent. I think you would need to be looking at like the Hillybergs and stuff like that to be comparable with this for its weight. Now the Hilleberg tents are a little bit lighter, I think actually some of them are up to a kilogram lighter than this, so that obviously you're, you're paying extra for the, the ultra, ultra lightness. But to get this size of tent at this weight with these materials, I don't think you can. Um, but don't fear, just let me know in the comments if you've found a tent that you think is comparable, let me know and uh, we can have a wee chat about it because I, I struggle a lot of the time to look past Decathlon um, for some of the tents because they are so good. Um, I've, I've got four of their tents <laughs> um, and I have never, never had an issue. Um, they have a great returns policy as well. You've got a year's no quibble return policy anyway, but if there is any issues or faults with it, you, they have no issue with replacing that there and then. So something to bear in mind, you've got that manufacturer guarantee right there. Some things you do get with the, the bigger manufacturers like Decathlon, even the bigger tent makers like MSR and even Hilleberg, these bigger tent manufacturers have the ability to research and develop their tents and return that R&D back to the customer at a lower price point. Maybe not so much the Hilleberg's, but certainly the Decathlon do because they are such a vast company. So you're getting a lot of the benefits of that big company. If you're anything like me, you tend to quite 
like buying from a smaller manufacturer because you feel like you're doing them a favour a little bit and and yeah usually the tents are pretty decent but you're also if you're also like me you, you know you need to think about money as well and you need to think about what you're getting for your money and I'm not going to lie you're getting a lot for your money. So tent setup yeah you can get this tent set up in under 10 minutes easily. Um, it's a standard two pole method tunnel tent. Um, it's not a freestanding tent like some of the dome tents. So you do have to like maybe peg out the rear two points, put your two poles through the, 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 the pole receiver lines and then peg out the two front points and that, that's it. Then you can start tweaking and getting your guy lines out and adjusting your, your, uh, your main peg out points. Which it has quite a lot of adjustment on it. Um, there is some uh, adjust adjustable cords um, to, to give you the tensions that you need uh, in the tent. Um, I like to get things quite taut, certainly on the, the, the base peg out point so that you've got as square a, a tent uh, footprint as possible. Um, so I like to do that and I take a bit of time getting that quite right. So sometimes, I mean, I'll maybe take a little bit more than 10 minutes just to get it square, but um, I think if you're in a hurry, if the weather's coming down on you, yeah, you can quite comfortably get this in under 10 minutes. Uh, the guy lines are, are quite appropriately placed and um, they take into account the poles, ventilation points and the uh, zip points as well. Which I, I like to get quite taut, uh, the zip points, because I do like to, to use the zip one-handed quite a lot of the time as well, which you can do if, you, if you're quite savvy with where you're placing your, te your tent pegs. Um, so yeah, it's something to bear in mind as well. Each uh, external zip door has a, a tie-back point as well, so you get tons of ventilation whilst maintaining the the inner bedroom's integrity without letting in the, mid the midges, the dreaded midge. Yeah, so tent setup is, is fairly straightforward, standard style tunnel tent, and yeah, it's not really an issue. The, the two poles are of different sizes, and they come actually with little um, bungee cords that are keeping them attached uh, to their appropriate um, pole receiver tube, if you want to call it that. Um, so you can actually pack it away with the, the poles like that, so you don't really get them muddled up, but it's quite easy to ascertain which pole goes where. So that's that's not too much of an issue. The tent is uh, quite fully featured. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it's a decent decent um, bit of kit. So you're getting tons of pocket space inside the the, the bedroom setup, inside the inner nest. Um, you're getting tons of ventilation, which I've used quite regularly, especially especially if you're doing more than a one night camp. If you've maybe set up one night and it's a decent hot day. Um, tents get quite hot inside so it's, it's quite a good idea like just when you come back to camp after your hike or whatever to just get the ventilation going so you can roll the whole rear section of this tent up um, whilst maintaining the, the inner nest and the netting and the mesh and you can open both front doors on the, out, the outer skin again letting plenty of air, throw, air flow through. If you were wanting to keep the, kinda, the main doors on the front of the tent closed there is a ventilation window on the front of the tent which again it, it aids with any airflow. And it also means that if you wanted to, and if the weather wasn't great, you could actually cook in the vestibule of the tent with the, the ventilation window open, letting all the fumes get out. Um, it's not something I recommend cooking inside a tent um, for various different reasons. You get fire risks, you've also got fumes from the, the carbon monoxide and, and, and stuff from burning fuel, basically. Um, so definitely one, one to be careful of, uh, but I'm not saying you can't do it. But um, I have certainly cooked in this with the, the ventilation working well. Um, it's not been an issue. I did briefly touch on it. It is a, a two skin tent. Um, basically that means that you have an outer rain fly and an inner nest. Um, this is a single pitch tent, which means that you pitch both of these skins together, which aids with tent setup speed. However, it does mean that if you've got a wet tent when you're packing away, that all your tent's going to get wet. Um, as anybody that's previously camped before, you'll know that if you touch an outer skin whilst it's wet, it draws the, the fluid, it draws the, the liquid through the skin. So when you roll it up, you'll end up with your inner net wet. Um, so this does have the function to disassemble it, so you can take the inner away from the outer and pack them separately. It's a there. You can take the inner away from the outer and pack them separately and um, keep the inner nest dry. So that's a great feature. It is very fiddly to get back on. I'm not going to. I'm not going to joke about with that. I've done it in the past. Um, I'm a big guy, and it's quite. <laughs> I'm not the most flexible either. It's quite difficult to get in and out uh, to peg it out. I'll show you. There's, there's toggles and little bungee lines um, that attach it to the outer rain fly. 
So yeah, it's, it's one I wouldn't do too often, but if you had to, you absolutely could. Yeah, to pack the tent away is fairly straightforward. It's literally a case of pull in your guy lines, pay, take your guy line pegs away. I generally leave the, the rear pegs in and I'll take the front pegs out, remove the poles, and then I fold it back to the rear pegs. And then I, once I'm ready, I'll take them out and I'll roll the tent away from there. I try and get this, this width um, when I'm rolling so that it's easy to put back into the stuff sack. It has got these compression straps here on the stuff sack, which I've got fairly loose at the moment, but that can be compressed a little bit more. Um, so you can, it does pack away quite small to be fair. I mean, look at that, it's not, I think I've got a, a little picture of it next to an A4 sheet of paper, just for size reference. It's not the smallest tent, but it's not huge by any means. Um, I have a, a four-man tent that is phew, that size, it's like a suitcase. This is, I know it's a three-man tent, but it's, it's a lot smaller. So it packs away very small. I don't know the exact volume of it, um, but it packs away very small. And with it being quite light as well, you can pretty much pack it anywhere in a backpack without it having too much of a, a detrimental effect on the, the weight distribution. So, in summary, I, I love this tent. Um, if I'm ever nervous about the, the weather or um, if I'm looking for that little bit more space, which comes in hand in hand with the weather, if you need more space whilst it's poor weather, um, I, I default to this tent. I have a, a one-man dome tent as well that I use for summit camping, purely because it's much lighter. It's a, less than half the weight of this one. Um, but if you can sacrifice weight, I'm saying sacrifice weight, it's still super light, isn't it? 2.6, 2.7 kilos. You would take this tent almost every time. Um, so I absolutely love this tent. I've had it for around five years now. Me and my son have used it on multi-day hikes. Uh, I've used it, even used it summit camping as well. It was a little bit heavy for me to take up, but yeah. And it's been through the ringer. It's been through the weather and it's withstood it. I don't think I've ever reproofed this either. Um, and it's still fairly durable, so it handles the weather well. Um, and it has plenty of, of features that I, I can use. So I would highly recommend this, highly. Um, and as I say, £270, it's not the cheapest tent, but £270 for five years worth of camping with no issues. It's hard to argue with that, isn't it? So yeah, highly recommend it. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tent review. I've tried to get as much footage as I can if possible to let you see it in action. Um, uh, don't forget, like and subscribe. You have to be alarm function, you'll get some notifications when new content's coming out and I'll hopefully do some more reviews soon. Um, but don't forget, comment, let me know what you think of the review, if there's anything else you'd like to know about the tent, or if you would like me to maybe do something next time I'm out camping, you say, oh, could you check this, would it be worthwhile doing that? I'm happy to give it a go. So, thanks again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, keep an eye out for more content to come. Take care. 